Hey guys, buckle up for a brand new episode of Below the Iceberg, the one and only podcast where we talk to real life two comma club winners. Whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a wannabe entrepreneur, or you've been in business for a while, you're sure to pick up tip bits of actionable advice from these million dollar entrepreneurs. And if you don't know what a two comma, two comma club winner is, it's where they've built one funnel in the ClickFunnels software and sold $1 million through just that one funnel, which is just a fantastic achievement. In this episode, I'm super, super excited to be talking to Mike Barron, who unexpectedly catapulted himself into a multi-million dollar lifestyle and has now won two Two Comma Club Awards. So let's dive in and find out what he won it with how he did it, and all the unexpected things that happened on his path to that coveted million dollar funnel. Welcome, welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for taking your time out today to come and speak to me. I what? am super, super excited to find out about your story. Sure. And I really want to congratulate you on your ClickFunnels Award. Thank you. So, a few of your stats that I looked up. So you're a multimillionaire. You've got around 44,000 followers on Instagram, uh, about 13,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I checked out your TikTok and I see you just started getting on your TikTok. That's right. You've done your research. I like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I hope you didn't dig too deep. But yeah, everything you said is accurate so far. Awesome. So you've got a couple of businesses, yeah? One is... Uh-huh. Limelight Media. That's correct. And High Ticket Closing Academy. That's right. Awesome. So do you want to tell me a little bit about what does Limelight Media do? Yeah, so Limelight Media, I started this in 2015. And initially, it was a website company. We used to sell websites for $1,000, $5,000. We did websites for Conor McGregor from the UFC. Uh, Patrick Bet David, who's a big entrepreneur on YouTube. And a couple other notable people. All right, that okay. transitioned into a ad agency. So I started working with trainers and gym owners in 2017. Okay. And I've been working with them ever since. I've, I've worked with approximately 2,000 trainers and gym owners over the last five years. That's where I got this two comma club. Facebook okay. ads, funnels. So it's a marketing agency is what it is. It's a marketing ad agency. agency. Okay, cool. And the High Ticket Closing Academy. So can you just explain... Because some people listening might not know what high ticket closing is. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, let me touch on that. So, um, big time entrepreneur Grant Cardone, lot pretty well known if you're on the internet and you're yep. an entrepreneur. I used to work at Grant Cardone's office in 2015. So my my thought was what I was indoctrinated to, to you know believe was if I could sell and close, I could do anything. I can have the life I want. I can even have the spouse I want. I can have the business I want. I can have the money that I want and I can do whatever. So I, I, I got really deep on sales and closing. I became obsessed with sales and closing. So I've always been like a sales dude. Okay. But disguised as a marketer. So like these two comma clubs, I, I, I have funnels that have made 7 million, 8 million, but it's not because the funnel is so amazing. It's because my sales team, my sales tech is, is very high. So to answer the question, high ticket sales and closing, basically uh, I teach inside sales, kind of like this on a Zoom call or inside the house or inside an office. We're not knocking on doors. We're not visiting people inside and anything over a thousand dollars is what I consider high ticket. Okay. Most people that are like in the coaching space, a high ticket would be like 5k, 10k, 100k, 250k. Um, so that's pretty much what I do. And that's, that's what I teach. All right. Okay. So when did you actually first hit your first million dollars in sales? I hit my first million dollars annually in 2017. 2017. And what were you doing when you first hit that million dollar sales? Can you remember? Yeah. Like when I actually hit that mark? Yeah. It, it, I was like, this is for real. It's <laughs> over. I made it done. You know? And that lasted for about 30 seconds. And I'm like, let me take my ass back to work is what I did. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was like a check mark, you know, it was a milestone. Okay. So 
did you, did you celebrate or was it just a 30 second celebration? It was a small celebration, very small. Like I hit it, I looked at it, I showed my wife, we did it. And then like, I literally just got back to work. But when I got this two comma club, I got this two comma club recently in the last 18 months, almost two years. The two comma club was a little bit different than my first year of making a million. Because okay. that million was a combination of a couple of different things. I had the website, I had this funnel, I had this funnel. Obviously this came from one funnel. When I got this first funnel, the first two comma club, I didn't, I didn't believe it was gonna happen. Um, I knew I was gonna get it, but I got very emotional. Like I, I, like I was sleeping with this thing. That's how much value I put on this. I came across Russell in like 2014, 2015. Okay, I want to stop you there a second because we're gonna we're gonna get into Russell in a minute. Well, okay, I'll take you back first. I want to take you back. Sure, sure. Let's do a little rewind, and uh, okay. I want to take you back to your take you back to your childhood. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the childhood then. Where did you grow uh, up? Yeah, I grew up in San Diego. All right. Okay. And what yep. what did your childhood look like? I was a bad kid. Okay, I grew up to a six year old single mom. Grew up poor. I was on government assistance in the States. Where, where are you from? I hear your accent. I am in UK in Wales. Okay, I gotcha. So I grew up in San Diego and I was poor and, and I was on government assistance. Um, as I, I had a lot of problems growing up in elementary school. Couldn't sit okay. still, couldn't keep my hands off of kids, just touching people. And, uh, you know, the teachers were like, this guy's a distraction to the class. He has ADD, he has OCD, he has ADHD. There was like 25 kids in the class from first, from kindergarten to like sixth grade. I always had my own cubicle. Like I was removed from the class in a cubicle, even facing the wall. It was crazy. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, I struggled. Um, learning and, you know, obtaining information was, was a little challenging for me. But things that I was into, like playing video games and Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, I could remember every character. I can remember their stories, which realms they came in. I came from their bios. I knew all the lyrics to all my favorite songs. <laughs> so I was flunking here, but things I had interest in, I would retain higher than most people. Yeah. Okay? So I become a teenager and I want to be a tough guy. I want to be a gangsta, even though I was not really that tough. So I'm, I'm like influenced on like Tupac and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. And I want to be a gangster. So eventually I became a gangster. So I was never a bad dude. But when I was a teenager, I was literally in and out of juvenile hall. And I was like in jail as a kid. All right. And so what, it, did, yeah. what, what put you there then? What did you do? We we're doing bad stuff. I, I like, <laughs> first off, I don't, I don't even cross the street without a, a green light. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm like a L7, uh, I'm a square. I don't break no laws today. A little disclaimer. I was doing like bad crimes. I was actually bur burglarizing homes and I was actually robbing people. Right. Doing yeah, as a teenager. So that was going on. And uh, I, 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 that was the environment I was in. And uh, I can't even say I was like, I was influenced, but I can't say it was like the crowd. I was like the guy leading the charge. I was like, come on, guys, let's go do some bad shit. And people would follow me. So um, didn't have a, the best relationship with my, my, my mom and my, my stepdad growing up. So at 18, I'm just like, what the heck am I going to do? College wasn't really a thing for me and um, I was an athlete I played sports I just had a lot of trouble as a kid I did I did start to get good grades though in like junior high and even in high school so I always had but ever smarts I just wanted to be a gangsta so that was my, like my childhood there's a there's an entrepreneur piece to that though so when you was in school yeah what was the dream what was the dream um like the long-term dream yeah what did you want to be when you grew up yeah, th that that wasn't even real. I didn't even. There was no long term dream. But never, never thought uh, I want to be uh, whatever when you grew up. When I was a young boy, when I was like five and six years old, I wanted to be a marine. I just thought marines were really tough. My my uncle was a marine. My godfather was a marine. So I used to wear like marine gear. But that that kind of fizzled out. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I could tell you that I've always been driven by money. Right. And when I was a kid, uh, the tooth fairy, okay, in the States, your tooth falls out, put it under your, your, your pillow, yep. you get like little bucks. My teeth started to fall out at like five years old, six years old. I remember wanting to yank my teeth out so I, you know, I can get more money. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I become 12, 13, now I'm selling candy. And I used to sell candy and, and pocket all the cash. 
And then when I was like 14, I had a team under me. I had like eight, you know, five kids selling candy for me and I would give them a commission. So I, I was running like a, a little candy <laughs> ring and, and I was so driven by money here in the States. You can't work until you're 16 years old, unless you have a permit. Yeah. So when I was 15, I got a whole bunch of applications. I filled them all out on my 16th birthday when I was legal. I turned them all in the same day so that I can get a job. I wanted to buy a car then. So I've always just been about money at a very young age. But did you get, what was your first job? My first job was McDonald's. All right, okay. I was like the best cashier ever. Yeah, they're still talking about me. <laughs> How long did you last? I was there for about a year and then okay, I went to jail. Okay. <laughs> and then I went to jail. <laughs> it, it, let me just kind of give you a little bit more though. Um, I kind of think about like, you know, success is a big thing for me. And, you know, I love helping people, of course, making money is a big thing for me. Uh, and I started thinking about like, where does this, like my brother on paper, my younger brother, he's way more book smart than me. He has his master's degrees. You know, me, I, I you know, like my target right now is to crack a hundred million in the next two and a half years. I talk to my brother, his dreams and goals are not that. So I, sometimes I think like, where does that come from? Is it, are you born this way? Are you influenced? Like me and my brother, he's, very, he's a very capable dude, different dreams, different goals. So, so I just remember being a kid about 10 years old. And I used to ask my dad, I would say my stepdad, I would say, uh, how come we're not rich? And he'd be like, <laughs> I'm rich. His name is Richard. He's like, <laughs> I'm rich. And I was like, man, that's lame, dude. Like, how come we're not rich? How come we don't have like nice stuff? Like what's going on? And we, I never really had an answer. So I was always intrigued by like being successful, but there was really like a, there wasn't a long-term thing. But then when I turned like 19, there was a, there was a, a change. There was a click. That so happened what, what did your stepdad do for a job then? Did he work? He was a manager at a, a bread factory, but not like a little bakery, like a big warehouse, you know, like 20,000 square feet and all these different conveyor belts and this big old freaking bed, bread factory. He was a manager there. Everybody loved it. Okay, so what happened when you turned 19? Okay, so now um, I'm 18 years old. Um, I'm, I'm dating a woman and she wants a dog and she wants a pit bull. And I'm like, all right, I can do it. I buy her a pit bull. She's still living at home with her mom. Two and a half weeks later, the dog ends up with me. I can't keep the dog. My mom doesn't want the dog. The dog ends up with me. I fall in love with the dog instantly. My best friend until the day he uh, passed. So at that time, I'm so like uh, obsessive, you know, so compulsive, Mortal Kombat. I know all the names and the realms and the bios. I start re researching on the internet, pit bulls. Then I start learning about blue pit bulls, which was rare back then. And I'm like, what the hell? These dudes are making $5,000 on puppies? So if you have like five puppies, that's like 25 Gs. Uh-uh, I'm in the wrong business. Like, let's, let's do this. I used to work at a bank. I got a good job, fortunately. I used to work night shift. So when everybody went home, I'd research the pit bulls. And I, I learned every single freaking dog that was like a big, you know, player. I, I knew all the, all the big kennels in the nation. That was at 18, a year and a half later. Okay, I'm 19 years old. I'm living on a ranch in Central California, two and a half hours away from my home. And I have 18 dogs. And I have the number two website on Google. How did you, how did you get there then? How did you go from... Well, first off, how did you go from McDonald's to getting a job in a bank? It's a bit, yeah. of, a, bit of a jump. Big jump, big jump. Okay, so I'm about to graduate high school. I'm 18. The talk in my house was like, oh, yeah, when you're 18, you got to get out of here. I was just causing a lot of trouble. Wasn't close to my parents. So I'm about to graduate high school. I'm like, I just turned 18. High school's over in like three months. I just, I don't know what the hell to do. Like literally, what am I going to do? Our neighbor, two houses down, was friends with my mom, but she always liked me. She's like, Mike, you know, Mike's a good kid. He's just a good kid. <laughs> okay. And she was a manager at a bank. And she was like, hey, you know, I have, I run a loan center. We have some openings for night shift. Would you be interested? I was like, heck yeah. Got suited up, you know, got ready for an interview, landed the interview. I got the job. Okay. I was, I was getting in trouble, but I was a juvenile and some of the stuff I, that I did was, were pending. So when the bank did the background check on me, it wasn't there. Oh, that was yeah. lucky. Very lucky. So now I'm 18. I'm making like $22 an hour in 2002, which was a, a lot of money for me at the time. I got my own place. 
I got to hang out spot with all my friends. And that's when I got into corporate. That was like the first time. Okay. So then how long did you do that for then? I did that for a year. Okay. And then, how did you end up on the ranch? Yeah. Okay. So there was a dude that used to sit next to me and he was in real estate investments and he was like a mini entrepreneur. He's like, dude, what are you looking at? And, you know, I'm looking at these dogs, bro. Look, man, these dogs are $5,000. This one's $8,000. He's like, no kidding. So there was some sort of like spark there. Hey, could, can, I, can I take you to lunch? I'm 18. This dude's like 26. He's like, yeah, man, I'm just always looking at, you know, like for opportunity and anywhere I can like help. Like, let, let's like, what's up? I'm like, bro, you and I can partner up. He's like, what do we got to do? I was like, check this out. We go back to the office. I'm like, this dog right here, this dog right here is a superstar. His name is Don P, but nobody knows it. The owner, he went to prison. I did my research <laughs> and the dog's staying with his friend and it's just like a pet. No one knows this dog's a superstar. The dog's only 12 months old. I was like, I can get this dog right now. This dog's worth over $100,000. I can get this dog right now for $5,000 and I can bring him to San Diego and we will get rich. He's like, you really think so? I was like, I can get my kid. Okay. And uh, it's crazy because I had that much intention as a young man. You know, I called the guy and said, yo, Nick, hey man, it's Mike from San Diego, dude. Big fan of Blue King Kennels. Don P, bro, what are you doing? Oh, that's Tony's dog. Okay. What's he doing? Uh, you know, Tony's locked away. This is all processing in like milliseconds. Tony's in prison. Tony probably needs some money. That dog is not really being taken care of. Why wouldn't the guy in prison take $5,000? Yeah. So I tell him, he's like, yeah, let me pitch the idea to Tony. He comes back the next day. He's like, he'll do it, but on a co-ownership, not outright ownership. He'll, he, you give us 5K and then, uh, you know, you can have half of him. I'm like, okay, done. I said, what are you doing with China, which was a legendary dog that this guy owned, the first guy, not the guy in prison, his friend. Okay. He's like, what do you want to do? I was like, I'll give you five Gs for co-ownership for her. He's like, really? <laughs> so I acquired a legendary dog and I acquired a, like a, a superstar that nobody knew about. I brought him to one dog show and I became famous overnight in the dog world. <laughs> and this guy, this guy, this guy wired them the money. Okay. So he wired them the money. Okay. Okay. And, and he's, like, he's like, what's next? I was like, shit, man, I live in this little apartment, this little house, man. He's like, would you be open to move? I'm like, yeah. This guy comes back that week. He's like, I got a property. It's a ranch. It's two and a half hours away. It's, it's called Fraser Park, California. There's a big old land. We're going to put a barn there. How many dogs can you, how many dogs do you need, Mike? I'm like, I need like 18. He's like, done. He buys the damn house. He buys the damn house. And I'm like, gone. I'm like, gone. I'm like in the ranch. I tell that you, is my, scary. And that's, that's how it started in the first year i made like six figures as a business owner my phone was ring 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 nba players nfl players really successful people would, would would visit me to buy my dogs and i knew my stuff so well so that's when i knew i could actually become successful okay so were they all different types of dogs or were they all pit bulls they were all pit bulls show dogs all right yeah great incredible like here let me I want to give your audience some reality. When I, so you got to understand, this is 2002, okay? So if, these, if, if this dog still looks this way in 2016, like impressive, back then it was like a freak show. Okay, let me watch this. Here's one of my dogs. This is a 110-pound dog. Look at those muscles. All right. So I used I, to I, have um, I used uh, to have a blue staffy and she was oh yeah she was AKA. really stocky and strong yeah. big muscles right do you know about the American bullies real big yeah we don't have them over here in the UK though but I I have seen them so I was like I got into it right before that whole movement took off so I was like there in the very very beginning and just got bigger and bigger and bigger yeah so with the dogs then what happened. What did you do with all the dogs then? Yeah, okay, you're very, your attention to detail is incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's, it's amazing. You're asking such great questions. So now I'm still not over, I'm not getting in trouble no more. I learned my lesson, but I still like look like a tough guy. You know, like I'm dressed like a gangster. Like I'm not really causing too much trouble anymore. So I moved, I go to this small town, Fraser Park, and I'm like blasting my Tupac music and I got my wife beater on. I look like I just got out of prison. And the, the community hates it. Nobody looks like me, talks like me. They hated it. The sheriff used to come to my house every day. 
there was a complaint. This we, somebody was fighting. We heard just so much of bullshit. They didn't. I just was creating too much noise over there. This small, quiet town. So were you on and, your own over there, though? Did you take any friends with you? No, I was very lonely. But I used to like bait my friends to come visit me all the time. Hey, come over, man. I'll buy you dinner. Hey, come over. I'll do something for you. <laughs> yeah, my boy Bruce, who's still my cl- closest friend. So one day, my dogs get in a fight. Listen, I love animals. Here's my shirt for my kennel, all these kennels. And I, um, I love animals. I still do. I have, I have snakes. I have cats. I, I love animals. I don't fight dogs. It's not what I do here. We're showing dogs. On this day, my two female dogs got in a fight. Pretty bad fight. And I had to break it up, and I'm all bloody. What do you know? I kid you not. Sheriff shows up like clockwork. Throws me in the back of the truck. I go to jail again. And I'm just destroyed. I'm like, even then, I've changed my life. I'm a, I'm a good person. I don't do you know any crime. And even then, still, this is my fate. Still, I got this bad luck. Still, I can't get a break. So I was like, I'm moving out of here. I left that. I, I, the charges got dropped, and I was in jail for about two weeks. The charges got dropped. I had a couple of my clients testify for me. I showed them my contracts. It took two weeks, though. And then I, as soon as I got out, I moved back down to San Diego. Didn't want to deal with the neighbors. And then I was placing dogs in homes, like, you know, with, with good families. And it just became too much. It became too overwhelming. And then I had to get back to, like, work, corporate work. And that dream went away. So where did you go then? I started working in dental offices for a couple of years. And um, I saw an ad. Like, we need a, an insurance we need a, uh, an insurance coordinator. I'm like, okay, cool. Admin. Okay, cool. 23 bucks an hour done. So I started doing that, but then I got into education okay. and that's when I started to move up. So what, how, how did you get into education? What made you start doing that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm doing the dental thing and, um, I take a job as an office manager. I believe it's like $28 an hour. This is 2004. So again, that was a lot of money. My daughter was about to be born. And I'm like, wow. Well, well you missed hard. that bit. Where, how, where, oh, we've just jumped and your daughter's going to be born. What happened to the bit in the middle? Okay. 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 So um, let me go back to like when I met my wife. Yeah. Did you okay, get married? Cool. Were, you, were you married then when you, when you, before your daughter was born or after? That, Give it to me one more time. So did you get married before your daughter was, daughter was born? Or? After. 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 Okay. Yeah. So when did so you meet I, your wife? So I, I moved down, to, I moved down to, back to San Diego with the dogs. And um, I'm dating this girl. Didn't work out. I see my wife, like right before I broke up with the, the girl. And I seen her. I fell in love with her. She was working at a convenience store. Like I seen her, my mouth dropped. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to marry that girl. And I didn't, I didn't approach her at that time. And uh, she, she worked right down the street from me. So I kept going to go visit her. I kept <laughs> running into her. And then my, my buddy used to work at the store, you know, like a little small convenience store. Yep. I'm like, hey, man, the, the Mexican girl, man, the pretty girl. Like, what's her story? What's her name? Like, who, she got a man? Like, what's her deal? And he was like, yeah, bro, like, I'm going to holler at her. Like, he was like, I'm going to holler at her. <laughs> I used to go look for her for like weeks and it turned into months. And then one day I went there with my guy, Bruce, who used to visit me with the dogs. And she was there. I was like, bro, go inside, go buy some candy, buy whatever the hell you buy, go find out the scoop. What's the deal with her? He comes out and just gives me, gives me just a little bit of information. Later that night, I went to like a, like a bar. <laughs> I got drunk and uh, I, I go back to the convenience store. She happened to still be there. Someone didn't show up. <laughs> So she worked two shifts. So I wasn't drinking or driving. Someone else drove me there. And I walked in and I was like pretty messed up. I had that liquid courage. Yeah. So I asked her, I was like, hey, you like to dance? She's like, yeah. I was like, I would like to take you dancing. She's like, okay. I was like, what's your number? So I got her number and I went home. I was happy as hell. It's like 2 a.m. and I lost her number. I had to go back to the store <laughs> to get the number again. <laughs> yeah. And then we went the next day and it was one of those moments where it's like, I feel like I've known this person my whole life. I, I, it, it was just instant. We was just kinetic energy. Just like, it was ridiculous. I seen her every day for about three years. The, the first day I met her, you fast forward another 900 days. There was not a day that didn't go by where I didn't see her. 
I went out on Saturday. I seen her Sunday, Monday, fast forward 900 days. I did not skip a beat. I had a close. You get it? <laughs> and then on the 900 day or so, I went to Hawaii on a business trip. Yeah. And uh, that's how I met my wife, Diana. She's amazing. Okay. Awesome. So then, your, so then your first daughter was going to be born? First daughter is going to be born. I take this job and uh, it's, it's all me. You know, I take responsibility. I get, I get let go after a month. So my daughter is going to be born in like a week and I'm unemployed and I feel horrible. I'm like 24. This woman I'm with, we're about to have a baby. I don't have no income. She's not working anymore because now she's taking a leave. There's no money. That was on a Friday. That day, I sent out uh, over 100 applications. I had interviews lined up on Monday. On Tuesday, I was already in a, in a, in a new job. Okay, yeah. what were you applying for? Yeah, I was applying for dental things, but I went to a temp agency, a staffing agency to okay. help people get placed, at, you know, dental professionals. Yeah. Woman, you know, she fell in love with me. She's like, Mike, oh, man, I like you, man. I was like, I would love to work here. Okay, she gave me like a little inch. I'm like, I'll love to work here. She started <laughs> the next day. So now I'm helping dental professionals land jobs as a like staffing temp agency, right? Yeah. So one day, UEI College calls me. It's a tech school that graduates dental assistants and medical assistants. The woman calls me. Hello, uh, my name is Rianne. I'm with UEI College. I'm the career services director. I want to establish a relationship with the staffing agency to help our dental students get jobs. Me... Polly, I'm very like high tone. I'm very, you know, if you're good people, I love you. You know, if you're good people, like I find out quick and I treat you like family. That's just me. Okay. So I told, I said, Rian, don't worry about it. You won't have to call anybody else. I'm your guy. You bring your, you tell your students to come here and make sure they mention your name and UAE. I will take care of them. I will treat them like family. Rian, everybody here is getting jobs. I could hear, oh my gosh, thank you. You're in the set, right? <laughs> so I knew there was magic there. I just knew something was going to happen. So a week goes by, she calls me, I'm thinking about her because I'm, I'm trying to wiggle and work that relationship. A week goes by and she says, uh, Mike, hey, it's Rianne. Did any of my students come, show up? I'm like, Rianne, I haven't seen them. I'm here, I'm waiting, like tell, tell them to come down. I'll help them get jobs. That's, that's, wow, that's interesting. Let me make some phone calls and make sure they got the right information. And then something happened, she says, Mike, you're really passionate about what you do. Would you be open to like being a career advisor at the college to help our dental students get jobs? I said, Rianne, when do I, when do we meet? I can be there this afternoon. Hold on, <laughs> slow down, Mike, slow down, Mike. I'll let you know. So you already know what happens. I go there, got the suit going on. I'm all smiles. I'm walking the freaking building. Great morning, you know, that's freaking Alan 10. And uh, we, we interview and, you know, great interview. And then uh, about three, four days later, she called me. She knows that, she knew that I really came from nothing. She knew kind of like this would be a big jump for me. You know, being a career advisor at a college, you know, I was a yeah. knucklehead delinquent, you know, six years prior. And she says, Mike, are you ready? And my baby was a newborn. Okay. She says, congratulations. I would like to extend an offer for a career advisor position at UEI College. I remember I was in downtown city, I pulled over, I started shaking. I was just like, oh my gosh, I got medical benefits for my, my family. I got dental benefits. I have a career now. I have something that's stable. And I was like, here, I could become a director. I could become a regional director. Then I could become a VP. And then I could, I knew I had a vehicle where there was upward mobility. Okay. I knew the life was gonna change. Yeah, so that's so what happened. what happened to that job? I'm looking for my stats. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be a little dramatic here. Within the first month, this is uh, this is an original printout. There, there was 18 campuses all across the nation. Uh, 250 career advisors in the whole organization. You already know what happened. Within the first month, I became the number one advisor in the whole company. All right, okay. Right, and I never lost that position until I left. And it's because I was way more skilled than everybody. I cared more. You know, I really cared about these kids' success. Um, 
and I was working harder than everybody. I don't do lunch breaks. My success is more important than my sandwich. I'll eat the sandwich at my desk if I need to. I worked after hours and I worked weekends when nobody was looking. And people used to criticize me. Why are you working so much, man? They're taking advantage of you. It was because I was creating. And then after a year, I became a director. To be, I, I got recruited by another school. Last place campus, I turned into number one within three months. And from there, you know, another year, I became a regional director. And then now three years in education, I've become a president at a college through big well, ass part. Well done. That's amazing. I appreciate that. <laughs> so what For happened? Goal, what happened next? Students. Okay, so so here's what happens. I'm 37. At the time I was 27. If you're gonna ask me what's your career goal? So I'm you know I'm starting to make money and starting to like almost touch six figures. If you're asking me what my career goal is, like, Mike, you're 65, what's your career goal? My career goal would have been to be a campus president. Like, I would have made it. That was, like, my long-term goal. Okay. Okay. So now I am three years in education. I get recruited. Hey, Mike, we have a situation. Our campus is underperforming in the job placement. And if we, lo- if we don't place enough students, we're going to lose our accreditation from, like, the government. And the school's going to get shut down. But we know who you are. You've been highly referred. If anybody can do it, it's you. Okay, it's six figures a year, and uh, this is the numbers we have to hit. Like, if we we want you to be the guy, I look at him like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. So I end up taking that president job. Okay, now I'm a pr- campus president. It's, it, everything changes. I walk into the campus, and they're like, hey, sir, hey. All of a sudden, you know, like I'm, I'm sir now, 27 years old. You get it? Like, at the big the big table now. I threw a gigantic party. I've texted everybody that, you know, supported me since back in the day. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate you. You played a part in this. I had a hundred people at my house, a lot of alcohol, a lot of music, a lot of fun. And I was a president. Six months in, six months in, the school loses accreditation. Unemployed. Again. Okay. There's something I haven't really touched on, kind of touched on it. I've, I've had bad luck. There's no such thing, in my opinion. I've had bad luck. Uh, you know, the, the dog thing, and then, you know, the dental thing, and then the freaking, I became a president, and, and I used to look up at the sky and say, why, why, God, why, why, why? And it was all me. It was me creating that bad luck. And uh, now I'm unemployed. And, you know, I, I had some success, I bought a BMW, and I was 27, and the next day I was unemployed. I couldn't even look in the mirror. Tony Robbins calls it loss of identity. You're president and now unemployed the next day. I, I, it, I was crushed. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was crushed. So when was that? That was 2014. 2014. So what was mm-hmm. your next move? What was your plan? Yeah, so now... I start interviewing with a whole bunch of different colleges and I'm competing, you know, I'm looking for a president job because that's where I came from. But now I'm competing against people that have 20 years experience, that have PhDs, that are a little bit more polished. You know, I'm just like all freaking muscle and, and motivation and ready to go take over the world that, you know, it's education. It's a little more conservative. Yeah. So I was... I wasn't really hitting the mark on those interviews. Okay. And then for the the roles below, I was overqualified. So I was like in a weird spot. So um, I find personal development around this time, 2013. And I'm going hard on Eric Thomas and, and Grant Cardone. Okay. So how did you find them? Were you searching online for things to do or? Yeah. Yeah. First book I ever read was How to Win Friends or in, How to Win Friends and Influence People, 2013. Okay. My people go friend, Keisha. She's like, Hey, read this. You'll like this. I read it. I fell in love with it. I I just, I was like, I need, I I need this. I started going to YouTube, how to become successful, how to become a millionaire. So that's when it started going, how to, you know, how to learn how to sell, how to, how to move up in your career. I I find Eric Thomas. I find Tony Robbins. I find Grant Cardone. Right. And I become obsessed. I know all the realms and all the bios, like same thing with the dogs. I go all in. I could say all the freaking videos. I've seen all the videos. There's there a couple of videos I've seen online 500 times, literally, over and over and over. Um, 
and I turn my car into a university. You know, I take a shower, Bluetooth, personal development. I'm going to sleep with earbuds, personal development. I'm showering, putting socks on, okay, personal development. I became obsessed with it. So I didn't, I didn't say that, but when I was moving up in my career as a career advisor, that's when I got introduced to the, the personal development. Okay. So now I'm unemployed. The job stuff sucks. And uh, I call Grant's office live. He has, a, he has a, a radio show going on at the time. And I said, hey, Grant, what's up, man? You know, love what you're doing. Long time follower. Um, you know, I, uh, I, here's my situation. I've had some success. I had a fall from grace. And um, I just, man, do, do I turn it down? Am I doing too much? He's like, nah, bro. He's like, you don't need to turn it down. Do you need to turn it up? He's like, you just need to get into a vehicle that actually could channel and actually appreciate your kind of energy. He's like, you got a lot of horsepower, dude. He's like, when are you going to come down to Miami, bro, and join the team? When are you going to like man up? I said, what? <laughs> I said, I said, how do I do that? He's like, dude, get off right now. Call Jared. I said, how do I do that? He said, like, call my office. Just let him know you spoke to Grant. We'll route you. Over, we'll route you over to Jared. I said, done. This was on a Thursday. I remember, I'm in Miami that next Tuesday. I told my wife. I said, hey. This is our chance. I can get around the guy. I know if I learn this sales game at the highest level, I know we can become rich. We'll be out there for two and a half years. Two and a half years turned into two and a half months. I went out there by myself. You okay. see, so you moved to Miami on your own? I did. So you got a job in Grant's office? Yep. And what were and you doing? Sales and market manager. I was a sales guy. So did they give you full training? Um, yeah, they did. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. The card on you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of that one. <coughs> so, how long were you there for? I was there for only two and a half months. Okay. So, why? What happened? Yeah. I was in a weird spot. Every job I held in the past, I've always been the top performer. Literally, not among the top, always been number one. And I've never been out producing corporate. I broke every record in corporate, every single job I've held. Like, going back to McDonald's. When I got to Grant's office, there was people there at the time that had more skill than me, that, that had even more discipline than me, like work ethic, and even had more awareness than me. And I was like a kid in high school that was like the, the superstar athlete. I went to college and wasn't shit. And it was a very uncomfortable foreign thing for me. I was not the guy and it was hard for me to deal with, just to be honest with you, it really was. And, you know, it, it, growing up, I was, you know, popular up among my friends and people would listen to what I had to say. When I went there, I was, there was 10 guys. I was like number eight and it hurt. And my wife used to call me at night because, you know, I went, I told her, let me go to Miami, make sure everything's great. I'm going to go kill it. I'll become the number one guy quick. And after that, we're going to all move over to Miami. She's like, yeah, let's go. I support you. I've seen, you know, she knows what I do. It didn't work out like that. She used to get me through it. Like, hey, they saw something in you. I'm like broken. I'm like, I want to cry. They saw something. Just keep going. You can do it. You know, if anyone could do it, it's you. And then two and a half months later, I blew out. Gone. What were you, what were you selling? We were selling his card on university. All right. Yeah. Yep. It, it wasn't real for me at the time. I, yep. I, I was asking people for forty thousand and fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. It wasn't real for me. I never touched that kind of money. Right. It, was, it was hard for me at that time. Okay, so you came back. Came back from Miami. Came back from Miami. What did you do next? I hid. Nobody knew I was back in town. I came back as a failure in my mind. Okay. You know, like an illustration is like I got a freaking hoodie on and I'm just like walking into my house. People didn't even know I was back in town. I didn't want to tell nobody. My closest friends, you know, like we're still getting messages. Hey, bro, we're all proud of you, dude. Like we always knew someone was going to become something. It was going to be you. Congratulations on the life you're creating. I came back already. I was ashamed that I was a, a failure. Right. So that yeah. happened. Okay. So now uh, I tell my wife, I said, hey, listen, I don't want to go back to work. I want to do my own deal. I know how to sell now. And, uh, you know, my dog business, I know how to make websites number one on Google. 
you know, I know graphic design, I know Photoshop, I know like Illustrator, I know websites, and this is all self-taught. I was like, I want to do this. Yeah. So how did you learn all of that then? Self-taught, just practice. I learned it, you know, when I was YouTube? doing the docs. No, they didn't even have no YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> just, just doing it over and over just, and over. So when you had the dogs, you were just teaching yourself. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So now um, I started selling, you know, the websites. And uh, basically I made more money every single month since the day I started. Every single month. Never skipped a beat. 18 months straight, the graph just kept going. Do, 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 do. So how did you get your first customer doing that? I started cold calling. I, you, you can get a list in San Diego from the city. It's all public record. And I will look up all the new businesses that were registered the month prior. So they're brand new. They probably need customers and they're new. So they're probably still haven't been you know, blown up yet by anybody else. Let me call these people. And I was just literally cold calling people, setting appointments. I would go see them and I would close them. And I would give them a website. So did you learn sales skills from Grant Cardone? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, I had to go there. I had to go there. I had to go there. But, so like, just to kind of, you know, let people know that I'm, what I'm doing right now, a lot of people don't know me. I'm not, I'm not as big as like a, like a, I'll just name some people in the space, like a Dan Henry, a Billy Jean, a Sam Ovens. Um, you know, I'm not as big as some of those people. I know for a fact, I'm making more money than most of those people. We, we, we're touching over seven figures a month right now. Okay. So how did you start? So you said you were selling websites with UFC fighters, was it? That happened like a year later. First, it was just local businesses. All right. Okay. How do so, you end up? How do you end up selling to UFC fighters? Yep. Okay. So now, there was a guy that used to sit next to me. His name was Nick Legend. Nick Payne, but they call him Nick Legend. He's a pretty decent entrepreneur. He does well for himself. And uh, we had the, he used to wrestle, and I used to wrestle. So we were like, we had a little friendship going on. So I recruited him. And I used to show him every time I would close a deal, I'd like rub it in his face. Like you can do Grant's thing, man, or you like, you can come over here to San Diego, bro, and join this team and we can go take over the world. So this went on for six months and he's like, Mike, I'm ready. So about six months after I left, I recruited him to come join me. All right. So he quit Grant to move over to you. Yeah. He stayed in my garage or excuse me. He stayed in my living room for a week. My wife hated it. <laughs> random dude we got a young daughter you know that's five julia must have been three actually and uh no she was like five and uh we ended up getting an office to me which was crazy it's like 500 bucks a month he stayed in the office but he was really good at sales and we would tag team we just we just started crushing and he brought on his brother john who's my executive director today and we started building a team and then within the first year we had like about 20 people and got a bigger office with seven suites. And then I had the lower level people that were closing the locals. And me, you know, I'm like the sales guy. I started going after the big business. Solar City signed them up. Conor McGregor signed them up. So that's what, what my job was to bring in the big, the, the wells. Right, okay. So when did you find ClickFunnels? I found ClickFunnels in 2000, 2016. 2017, between 16 and 17. All right, okay. And how, did you just come across it or did you go looking for something new for building your sites? I seen, right around the same time, I seen a Billie Jean, like, ad. Billie Jean is marketing. Yep. Must have been 2016, I bought this and he had a great ad. He's like, yeah, you know, Facebook ads to funnels. And I bought it, I was like, dude, this is awesome. So right around the same time, I found Russell. I started looking up Russell and I seen his, like one of his early presentations on the funnels. And he was talking about how, you know, back in the day, you have to have all these developers and all these, you know, programmers and all the, he's like, now you just need click funnels. I was like, damn, that kind of makes sense. I like, <laughs> and I just loved the guy. Like I just, I fell in love with the guy instantly. So I started getting all his free stuff. A guy is, is all, you know, his, he had two books at the time, dot com secrets, extra free secrets and got those. Yeah. He had another book, which was, it was like 181 split test. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I got that must've been about 2016 and it was just a beautiful, colorful book. I used to just look at it. 
And uh, I was telling my partner, Nick, I was like, hey, bro, this is the future. Like, screw the websites. This is the future, dude. And then uh, my partner ended up splitting. I ended up buying my partner out. And I, 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 I leave the websites. And uh, I start moving into funnels and Facebook ads. We were making 50 grand a month, but our overhead was like 45. So we weren't making no money. So my thing was like, screw the websites. When you have the funnels, you don't need the big team. And you can get instant revenue for your clients. So they stay on with you. So that's when I found Russell, 2016. Okay. So Fit Pros, mm -hmm. what were you, what, how did that come about then? So were you doing yeah. funnels for Fit Pros? I wasn't doing funnels for Fit Pros. I was doing funnels for anybody that would be down to do it. And, you know, of course, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to close them. So I ended up finding a client local in San Diego. She owned a gym. Her name is Danielle. No, mm, let me see. It was, Danielle was one of the first ones, but I found a gym and I put up a funnel with a beautiful offer, transformation session, which is a consultation with a cool name. And I ran ads to it and we were getting like 50 cent leads. And this woman's freaking funnel generated like 200 leads in like 24 hours. And the woman was like, what the F, what <laughs> are you doing? And give me more. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, like Russell wasn't kidding. Like you're one funnel away. I, I was, it was, it was the same feeling I had when I got the phone call from Rianne. It was the same call I got when, I, when Grant said, call Jerry. This is the same thing when I said I can get Dom P. I just knew I was like about to embark on just a whole, like I'm about to hit oil and it's about to blow up. So I kind of shift gears and I start calling gym owners and I got another gym owner, signed them up. Must have been, it was like a $1,500 retainer, which was great every single month. He pays for the ad spend and the same thing happened. And I, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm the gym guy. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not talking to no freaking bakeries. I'm not talking to anybody else. We are doing funnels and ads for gym owners. And all I did was take my offer in the same funnel I changed the logo and the color and I just planted them all across the nation. And that's what I did. And that's when I started to make some, some decent money. So was that was just generating the leads. And I was teaching them how to sell. That, that's one thing that nobody taught back then. They used to think you just get leads and everyone that was starting agencies at that time, they were getting a you know, shit ton of leads, but the actual business didn't know how to sell or how to handle that lead. They wouldn't even call the freaking lead. Even when they called them, they couldn't sell them or get them to show up. So I, I, I created a membership site with all my sales stuff. So that was the one thing that was different about me. Right. Okay. So how did you get your first two comma club award then? What funnel was that? Um, yeah, I'll tell you right now. I got to tell you this. I think you'll find it interesting though. Real quick, let me back, back up. I remember hearing about Dan Henry. And he was the first guy to get the two column club. This must have been 2017. Two, yeah. And they said he got it, I believe, like six months. And what he did was run the perfect webinar, Russell's perfect webinar. So I remember preparing. He, suppose he made like 40, 50K in his first perfect webinar. So I remember I did my first webinar. And I was just told my wife, like, I kissed her. I'm like, I'm going to the office. We're about to get rich. And I remember I went to the, you know, do my perfect webinar. And I was like, dude, I was with my guy Gage. I was like, man, everything's about to change right now. I did the first perfect webinar. I had like one buy for 200 bucks and I was really like let down. How, uh, many, so people, I, how many people showed up? Like 18. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, I thought I was going to get rich right there at that moment. Uh, so now I'm in the fitness space and um, yeah, we're just cranking, you know, we're, we're, we're I got up to a hundred thousand dollars a month. In 2000, at the tail end of 2018, uh, no, no, I'm lying. I got almost up to $100,000 a month. I'm doing like 80,000, starting to bring it in, and it's just a small crew. It's me, Gage, and like two other people. So like, I'm freaking stacking money, you know? My lifestyle's changing. I got a Mercedes. I live in this $3,500 apartment, which is, you know, pretty expensive at the time. And, you know, I'm just my life is pretty good and, you know, I'm saving money and, and I'm pretty much buying whatever, what I want at the time. And that's when I got my, my first two comic club. I was eligible in 2019. 
I got the plaque, you know, celebrated it, told everybody, and it was, it was a big freaking deal for me. It really did was. You, did you, was it a goal before you got it, or did you just get it and go, oh, I'm going to apply for it? That was the whole, that, as soon as I heard about the two con club, yep. you know, 2016, that was the only the goal. That was, that was, that was, these have always, it's a weird thing for me. You know, I take this stuff very serious. To me, this is your uh, platinum plaque if I was a music artist. This is my Oscar if I were an actor. You know, this is my Grammy if I were a singer. So these have always driven me. So my goal this year, uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit it. I'm two months away. Was to get a two comma club X for this one funnel. I'm two months away right now. Mike, what's your goal for 2021? I'm going to get a two comma club X. You don't want anything. Else. That's my goal. That's my business goal. Literally, to make ten million dollars off of one funnel in a in, in this coming year on a brand new product. We're so close, but we're not going to hit it. Unfortunately, we got like two weeks. So the, I'll grab that. But next year, when we do this interview again, I'll have the twenty five million dollar plaque. Okay. So is that on the high ticket closing then? That's right. Yep. Okay. If you want to talk about that, we can talk about the high ticket closing. <laughs> so <laughs> with the with the gym funnels, did you stop doing that or does that carry on? Do you have staff doing that now or does that, is that? Fine? I do, but it's, I do, but it's, it's, it's this much of the business now. So right, now okay. uh, I get into coaching in 2018. I have a lot of, I had an interview with Dan Henry and I was like, yeah, I bought a Dan Henry course. I make 50, over $50,000 a month. So everybody in his program started hitting me up. What's your secret? What are you doing? What the heck? What am I seeing that? What are you seeing that, you know, that I'm not seeing? I'm like, dude, here's the, here's the deal. I was like, bro, I know how to sell clothes. That's the difference. That's, that's what makes me different than all these ad agencies. I was like, hey, man, you know, if I could show you how to do this, would you be able to do something? Yeah, what does that look like? Five grand, it's five grand uh, for two months to work with me. I'll meet you every single week, even twice a week. So that's how I got into coaching. So I started helping all these agencies kind of blow up. Right, okay. So I had a whole bunch of sales material when I was teaching these guys. You fast forward to last year, August, I opened up the Closer Academy, August 1st. The material I had from 2018 was repackaged, recycled into the Closer Academy. Listen to me, Pauly. I, I, it, it's live. I couldn't keep up with the credit cards that they were throwing at my face. We made a million dollars in the first month on that product. Was it so? How did people find out about that? I had a whole bunch of people that were um, promoting it, and and they were like literally in front of. They were in groups. They were in podcasts, and they're talking about their success. And they're just saying, you know, like if you want to learn how to do this, let me know. And you know, they would have a private conversation. They're like, yeah, the truth is, I know a guy named Mike. And, and so my affiliate program just blew up. It just it blew up. It was all organic. It blew up. And I, and, and I don't, I don't want to say I wasn't ready for it, but my life changed again. You know, I was already a millionaire marketer, but it, it's, I'm on a different thing now. It just, I felt like an overnight success that's taken 10 years. And we made a million dollars in the first month off that new product. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how yeah. many, how many, so when did you say August? Yeah, August. August, yeah, August uh, 1st, 2020. So that was in pandemic. Yeah, right. Exactly. It was a $3,000 product and then it became a $5,000 product. And right now it's a $7,500 product. And we sign up anywhere from eight to 20 people every single day, seven days a week. And do you run ads for that or is it just all the affiliates? Right now it's, we, we run ads. We spend anywhere from three to, we, uh, I'd say four to $5,000 a day. Okay, and, and what are they, are they coming in on a webinar? They're coming on a webinar. Evergreen webinar? Evergreen webinar, $97 offer. I'll give you all my secrets now. <laughs> uh, $97 offer uh, to an appointment to the upsell. Okay, so then they book a call. Is it they the book call? a call. Yeah. With a full application. How long have you been following Mike? What is your income? Um, you know, on a scale from one to 10, how serious are you about making a change? If, if you feel, you know, that Mike would be a good fit, what would be your investment attitude? And there's a drop down, highly motivated. Why is it important for you to get coached by Mike Barron now? I've been following him for two years, love the guy, 
I want to, I'm ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And how many, how many people do you have on your team who take the calls then? About, I have one of the bigger teams on the internet. There's approximately 30. All right. Okay. Do you mind if I share my screen? No, cool. Go for it. Okay. You, I'm usually wild, but with you, I, I feel like I got to be polite. <laughs> so here, here's my sales team. All right. Okay. okay. Here's my sales team. I go down here to members. So here's my sales team. Okay. It's very likely we've closed deals since I've been on with you. Okay. So let's see what's going on. Here's $500 that was just swiped in the last 10 minutes. Here's $420,000 we've done so far this month. I said, man, we need to speed up. Uh, here's, uh, let's see here. You'll, you'll see like it. Here's a paid in full coming right now. It's going to be $7,500. It just, here's $3,500. Like when I say that we do over a million dollars a month, I, I'm one of the few guys that does it in, in this space. Here's another so $3,500. Where, okay. uh, where are these um, new clients? Are they all American or are they all across the world? Or They're mostly in the States. You know, we get people, um, we run most of our ads in the States. I definitely, you know, work a lot, a lot of people in like Europe and UK and, but right now we mo run most of our ads here. Um, but I do want to expand out. So what, got, do you, got, uh, what do you do on a day to day, day to day basis now then? I just chill, smoke a lot of weed. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't smoke. I don't do any words. Um, and just check your messengers for, messages for when the sales come in. Yeah, so I, I, so I have a, a guy, so I'm in, a, I'm in a new role. This is brand new, okay? I'm not even on my computer right now. But there's a, I have 93 people on my team and I just moved into a new role and the new role is called founder. And okay. I have a guy who runs the company. He's, he's the uh, executive director. He's Nick Legend's little brother, but me and him are super close. He left with his brother. He just came back this year. This guy's out of this world, phenomenal. Just a real... A player talent guys incredible so he's running the company as of 45 days so I, I have three things I'm focused on right now most importantly is to create better student experiences and better student outcomes so I'm like helping patch you know um, any leaks and holes I want to create a Disneyland like experience for everyone that comes through in a perfect world I want everyone to buy the program to become successful that's one of my focuses with that, I'm recruiting talent. Okay, that's one. The second thing I'm, I'm looking to do is I'm looking to increase my brand and I'm looking to reach more people. I told you earlier, I was like, there's other markets that are way more popular than me, but they're not making the money I'm making. I, I'm not even close. So I need to do what I'm doing right now. Meet great people like you, share my story, expand my reach, okay? Just really, you know, get out there and get on more stages, touch more people. So that's one thing. And then really the, the last thing is, to create content, like literally, you know? So like, I just dropped a video on YouTube. I think it's like, it's nothing crazy. We dropped in 20, 24 hours ago. Let's see, 700 views, whatever. Somehow that, some way that turns into money. But I, I recently checked off one of my bucket lists. I bought a Rolex, always wanted a Rolex. All right. And you know, solid gold Rolex, always wanted it as a kid, I'm not selling candy. Finally happened recently. So I create the whole, document the whole process and people are like, that's pretty cool. And this guy's doing this because of sales and closing. So to create content, yeah. There's one last thing I'm lying. I'm just gonna tell you this because I really like you. This is my this is my $100 million company in two and a half years. I'm opening up license licensees slash franchises. So I'm doing All right, that right. okay. Yeah, I have six of them. I just started that 40 days ago, 30 days ago, yeah. Of that's the closing whole industry. So the closing academy. That's right. Yeah. Cool. And is yeah. that just going to be America or? I'm going to go. I'm going to put one everywhere in the world. I'm going to have one in UK. I'm going to have one in Rio. I'm going to have one in Tokyo, Japan. I'm literally going to plant this all across the world. We're opening up warehouses, training facilities. I'm doing that right now. So we have six partners already. I'll have. 100 this time next year. Sounds good. Sounds good. I Very like exciting. it. Well, I've had a really awesome time listening to your story. I've absolutely loved it. Um, I have one last question for you. Of course. If you were going to be an animal, 
for 24 hours, what mm -hmm. would you be? So my favorite animal, hands down, is a lion. And uh, not because it's just being strong, but I, I believe just everything about it. I told you I'm all in animals. I, you know, the lion, it's, it's gorgeous. It's gracious. They're not just solitary animals. They're, they're, there's community. They run in packs. I have studied a lot of lions. You know, as a kid watching, even I was a badass kid, watching Discovery Channel and you know, uh, National Geographic. To this very day, I go to the zoo. I, I love animals. So I would 100% be a lion. That is my spirit animal. Awesome. Loved it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk to me. And I can't wait to share this with everybody else. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you guys enjoy this, if there's anything I can do to support your success, flow your power, uh, support Polly, hit me up. I'm a real dude. Instagram, the Mike Barron one. And I will see you guys at the top. Peace, everybody.